Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. And today I'm going to be showcasing off my favorite EDH commander deck, which is Tachyova. I love my Tachyova lands deck. I've been pimping it out for a while now. And I've been asked to sort of share some of my decks, and I uh, thought I'd start off with my favourite. But before we get into looking at this great deck of mine, well, I think it's great, i um, got some very exciting news, everyone. I have just recently hooked up with yourplaymat.com, and I've made, well, I've got some lovely sleeves here. Now, these sleeves were designed by myself. Um, I've got a nice new affiliate code. There will be a link below in the description. You can go and get yourself a little bit of discount. But basically what this company does, they um, design sleeves or you can design them yourself. And they do play mats as well as it is in the name, yourplaymat.com. But I got these, as you can see, total MTG sleeves that I'll be putting in a deck very soon. Um, put my little logo on there. And of course, you know me, Blue Mage for Life. So these what I designed. I'm going to put this around some other, you know, a new commander deck maybe. It might get on Tachyova, you never know. But I really want to save these for a mono blue deck. Um, but they're really nice sleeves, really sturdy as well. I've had a little pull around them as well. And I think, you know, they're pretty decent. So if you want to get yourself some discount, go down below and, you know, design them yourself. Is there any content creators out here? Get your logo on there and just, you know, play with your pimp sleeves. Treat yourself. Anyway. Let's get on to the deck in this lovely satire box here. Oh, get this out. Touch over and the deck. Now, I've been working on this for a while. Um, we're going to zoom in now. Zoom, 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 zoom. So, for those of you that don't know, Tachyova um, is a Murfold Druid. Whenever a land ends a battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Stats are 3-3 three, three, and it costs 5 mana. 5 mana is okay because we'll be ramping. We'll be putting loads of lands on the battlefield. So, the cost of it, you know, it's 5 is sometimes people might see as high, but it's not too bad. Um, and Tachyova, for me, is a really fun. And it's uncommon as well. So, it's not exactly ever going to cost you a lot of money if you do want to build this. But the rest of the deck might, because as you can see, I will. I've pumped it out. So first of all, what we're going to look at, I've sort of got me in some sort of an order for you, uh, is the lands. Because lands are obviously the main part of this deck. It is a lands-based deck. And um, what I've done is I'm pimping it out as I go. This is more of a showcase sort of thing. So you can see, you know, my, my favorite deck. And I want to know in the chat what your favorite deck is. Have you got one that you're, you know, you're pimping out with special cards or just one that you really, really enjoy playing? Now, the basics here, I have a different art for every single basic that I have. Uh, just what I wanted to do, uh, mostly foil. A lot of them are foil. Um, but we're starting off with the Command Beacon. New card this was um, from the when the new Commander set came out. You sacrifice it, you put your Commander into your hand from the Command Zone. And when you've got a, you know, you've got a Commander that's 5 plus mana, sometimes this can be really helpful. Now we're going to look at this. Oh, look at that. I'm probably going to say, oh, look at that a lot in this deck. Um, I'll try not to do it too much, but it probably will. Probably have a little count at the end. Uh, this lovely command tower pulled it in a pack, foil full art. And then we go Terramorphic Expanse. And the reason running these sort of things is because this deck will work well with fetch lands and any kind of, you know, search lands or anything like Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Worlds. Um, anything like that because you want to get the double triggers of when the land ends the battlefield. And we do have landfall triggers um, in the deck as well. Nice Reliquary Trail there, a promo. I need to pimp up my Mystic Sandry if I can. I've got Lotus Field here. Um, Ark of Araska, potentially sometimes draw a card when you've got the uh, City's Blessing, which can be, I find this a very nice, very nice card. Uh, new addition to the deck for me was Ghost Town. Uh, for zero, you can return Ghost Town to its owner's hand, use this only during um, another player's turn. So you return to your land, and basically it's just like a constant play, back to your hand thing with Tatiova or your landfall. It's a really, really good card and lovely old art there. The Foil Tolaria West, and then Simic Growth Chamber. This is one of the most important lands in the deck. Because it is, you know, it's part of many, many combos that you can get in there with, uh, say, Lanoir Scout with the land, uh, Retreat to Column, you've got Zendikar's Roar that you can keep bouncing lands and everything like that, and Simic Grove Chamber 
works very well with that, and you get your tatch over on the field as well. And then we've just got some lands here uh, that tap for both the colours, and I talked about the fetch lands. I've got Windswept Teeth in there, Flooded Strand, Misty Rainforest, Scalding Tarn, and a Foil Fable Passage. Now, if I pull, you know, Modern Horizon 2 is out, and hopefully I will pull some maybe some old arts and pimp the up deck a bit a little bit more. Um, but yeah, they're not foil, unfortunately. It's not, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not foil. Um, but then we go to these basic lands, and these would be a mixture of different arts. Um, what this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to have every single um, basic land a different art foil if I can get them. That is one of my favorites. They're the old bucket island. Um, so yeah, these are just going to be the basics. Um, that's a beautiful one as well that I got in one one of the products. Um, I'm trying to think what it was. It's not unglued. It, you know the one I mean. Um, this is gorgeous as well. Look at that. That is. I I like those M21 islands. You know. Um, go through a few more here. Uh, just the basicness of these, but they're all beautiful to me. And because this is a lands deck, we've got snow forest there as well. I wanted to pimp it out. Now I run 39 lands, I think it is in total, which is nearly half my deck. Um, but it works. It has to be that way because the whole deck is a lands matter deck. Now we're going to go to um, the artifacts. Now I don't run many of these because I have more putting lands into play rather than artifacts. But I do have a soul ring and a simic signet here. And then I have one mana dork myself in a lovely gorgeous um, fiend horned elves to help with a little bit of the ramp. But I want to be playing lands because I want those triggers. Right. Now... Playing extra lands. Playing extra lands is very good for this deck because we get multiple triggers on landfall, on Tatchover itself. So we have ways to do that as well. Lanoir Scout, tap it. You may put a land from your hand into the battlefield. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, play two additional lands each turn. I've also got a lovely foil dryad there, playing additional land each turn. So we can, we'll be playing multiple, multiple lands. Lands you control at every basic land type as well. We also have Wayward Swordtooth. Uh, this will let you play an additional land on each of your turns as well. And then to pump up a little, we've got a growth rights of it. Now, if you've got the four creatures on, this will then flip into uh, the Itzmok Cradle of the Sun, which is like my Gaia's Cradle. Um, this is obviously the cheaper version, although this card itself is not very cheap now, but it's definitely cheaper than a Gaia's. Uh, this will add for one green mana, then add one green mana for each creature you control. And then the last one I have here is AC Tyrant of Gaia Straits 5-5, but it lets you play an additional land on each of your turns as well. So you can see, although we don't have many sort of mana rocks and mana dorks, we do have ways to get additional lands into play, which is what I like. Right, now we're going to go on to uh, the searchable lands. So we've got crop rotation in here. Lovely 4-1 that I picked up recently. Uh, so you have to... Additional cost cost this way. You have to sacrifice a land, but then you search your library for a land card. Now, interest this is land card, so it can be anything. So it can help us find one of our really good lands. And then I have a Japanese version here of Growth Spiral that I just think is pimped out and gorgeous. Harrow as well. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them into play. But we do have ways to bring back lands from the graveyard. So even though we are sacrificing these, we can bring them back as well. Different spells. Now, the one card you'll see missing from this deck, because I haven't got it yet, I just not managed to pick one up. It's quite expensive card. It's Crucible of Worlds, which will be a great addition to this deck. And then I've got this lovely foil oh, oh, Japanese Cultivate. I just love it. I mean, some people dislike Cultivate. I can't understand why, but for me, I love it. And, well, you can see why it's in the deck. Cotomus Reach as well. Library up for two basic lands with all those cards, one on the battlefield. Taps one into your hand, so another way to get more lands. On to the battlefield. Now, what are we going to do with these lands? Like I spoke about, we've got landfall here. And I'm um, just making sure I'm picking up that one. There we go. Yeah, so we've got Lotus Cobra here in the Alterna art. Uh, whenever a land ends the battlefield, under control, add one mana of any colour so we can ramp out a bit bigger. Retreat to Coral Helm. Managed to get a nice 4 1 from a local shop, Axie of mine. Um, they have one in stock, and I've been after this foil for ages. Um, and I picked one up, so I was very happy about that. Uh, this is part of the combo that you can do as well, like I said, with the land triggers, putting a land into play. 
um, with the Lanoir, and then you know you can just go off on that. You can make untold mana. You can do um, there's stuff you can do with life as well. Uh, retreat to Korraheim. Whenever land is about under your control, choose one. Tap or untap target creature or scry one. You know scrying is very strong, and I love the retreat. Scoot swarm. Get those lands into play, and then just have multiple and multiple scoot swarms. Really, really go wide strategy with this card. It can really take over a game, and your opponents will want to kill that quick. Tireless Tracker works well with lands coming into the battlefield. You get to investigate, and you sack clues, and then you put more counters on this, and this become a big beater. Just a very good, versatile card, that. And Zendikar's Royal... You can see the amount of times we can trigger stuff with landfall, and this ends the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 green elemental token. So if we can get the combo going, we can just get multiples of 2-2s. Rampaging Balafs making 4-4s four is never bad. Light card, an Avenger of Zendikar. is one of our basic win cons as well, because it's it can just be so good, Ben Zendikar. It's been reprinted multiple times now. It's a 5-5 five, five body for 7. When it ends the battle, put a 0-1 plant token onto battle for each land you control. Which is why we don't go more down the mana rooks and, and, and door, you know, the mana dorks kind of route. We want to be putting lands into play because we want this on there to be as big as we can. And then start playing lands with, you know, multiple searching for lands or playing extra lands. And getting the 1-1 one, one counters on those lovely plants and building them up for the win. If we can. So now we're going to get on to sacrificing. Um, we have a Zerba Orb here. Sacrifice a land, gain two life. For zero. So if we're taking down our lethal attack, potentially we could sack all our lands if we want. We've got ways to get them all back. So Zuranorb can sometimes be a saver, or it can be for a, you know some kind of other trick that we want to do to get them all back in and maybe do something else with them. Um, Sylvan Safekeeper, sacrifice a land, target creature you control gains shroud until end of turn. I've also got Maluka in there, which is return a land to your hand, and then we get to 1-1 one, one Illusion Token. Making lots of tokens, we've got lots of mana, we can sink it into that and just keep paying the one. Now, when lands leave the battlefield for that sack effect, Titania is brilliant for this. So, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield when it enters, which is handy sometimes because we might have a really good land gone. Whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, which is why we have these lovely sack effects, we get a 5-3 green elemental token onto the battlefield. I mean, that is great. That This is a win con in itself as well. Get the Zerber Aura in there, sacrifice all your lands at the end of someone else's turn, get all those 5-3s in there, swing, swing, swing for the win. That's what we like. More sacrifice lands as well. I forgot about this one with Wellbreaker. Uh, enters exile target artifact, enchantment or land, and we can sacrifice a land and return this from the graveyard to our hand and get back and, you know, do the cast trigger again. So now we go to a bit of graveyard shenanigans, as I like to call it. Graveyard shenanigans. So starting off with a life from the loam. Return up to three target lands from your graveyard. But this does have dredge three as well. Very, very strong card life from the loan. Eternal Witness, bring back something that we really like. Staple in green, always in all the decks. Now, Silver Awaken until end of turn. All lands you control become 2-2 two -two elemental creatures with reach indestructible and haste. So potentially we can turn all our lands into creatures attack in. Brilliant. Playing lands from the graveyard, like I said, I don't have Crucible of Worlds. But I have um, Ramina Excavator, so I can play lands from a graveyard. So I do have an outlet to do that as well. Scape Shift. Get all those lands, sacrifice them all, search your library for up to that many lands, put them onto the battle, tapped, and then shuffle your library. We have got real land shenanigans here. And then we have Splendid Reclamation to bring them all back once we've done it as well. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So there's going to be no getting away. We're going to have multiple triggers if Tachiova's on the field. If the landfall triggers on the field, we'll be chucking all our lands into the graveyard. And then we'll be getting those lovely triggers and getting them all back in there and just, just, just basically just amassing armies. It's really, really strong. Um, card draw. Now, we do have Tachiova and stuff like that. It's mental card draw, but I've got a nice foil brainstorm in here. And I've got Blue Sun Zeniths as well. This will get shuffled back in July. A foil version of that as well. And then I have a lovely Japanese etched of um, Harmonize. Just think it's a beautiful arty card. And it's, you know, it's decent card draw as well. Um, but the Pimpness certainly got it into the deck. 
Um, now we're going to go for a bit of tutoring. I don't have many tutoring cards in here, but I do have Mystical Tutor in there. That is a From the Vault foil there. And then I've got Green Sun Zenith, another vault, but lovely, gorgeous art there. And Cord of Calling. Now we can go and search for maybe one of our combo pieces, or maybe we need, let's say, big like a Balaf or something like that to go and get a decent green creature, get it into play, and get some value if we need to build up some blockers, or if we just, you know, we just need something to get a bit of value onto the field. And then we go to my counter magic and removal. So, counter magic. I'm a blue mage. You can see it from the sleeves. I'm a blue mage. Uh, Swan Song. Very good. One mana. Give them a bird instead of something really strong. Maybe a board wipe's going to hit us or enchantment or anything like that. Uh, Swan Song. One mana. Great. Counter spell. Oh, now just look at that. Could have a video just about that. Look at that counter spell. That is just gorgeous. Then we have Fierce Guardianship. I have some strong counter spells in this deck. Force of Will as well. Oh, it's got some strong ones. Glen Indrara Archmage. Sacrifice it. Counter target non creature spell has persist. So we can bring it back as well as long as it doesn't have the counters on it. Capsize with, with multiple mana effects that we have. And untold mana. If we can just bounce everything and return it to our hand, it's a really annoying lock card. And, you know, people hate playing against Capsize. But probably not as much as this. Cyclonic Rift. Bounce everything. They may be swinging for the win. I see this as a win con sometimes as well. E-wit it back. Get it back into your hand. I like doing that. And then we have a Beast Within. Just a nice... It's three mana. Instant like I said. Stapling green. Really good card. and nice bit of removal. So now, although... Oh, I've left one of the landfall cards in this. So we've got some... I'm going to go through some creatures here. Um, that, you know, they do a job. So these are creatures that all have different effects. Ruin Crab with the amount of land base that we have in there and stuff coming into play. Mill is a definite, definite option. And we do have Ruin Crab in there. I did have Hedron Crab as well, but I, I felt like I'm just going to have Ruin instead of Hadron. Uh, taking away those those three lands. Uh, three cards is just really strong. Calling Oracle. Um, it might be one that gets changed for something else. Um, it, it's good. I love it. Um, but I feel like, you know, maybe I could get away with not having that in the deck. Risen Reef. When a Reef or another elemental enters the battle under control, look at the top card. If it's a land card, you get to put it into play. So, you know, if you don't, you put it on the battlefield, you get to put it in your hand. So it goes to the deck a little bit, and we might get a nice trigger with Risen. Attacking Graveyards. Utility Creatures. These Scavenging Ooze as well. Then we've got Rex Sage. Ends the battlefield. You may destroy target artifact enchantment. So we've got removal in Creatures and... You know, these creatures are just all utility creatures and will help us out in the game at various different points. Uh, Multani, good with lands. Reach Trample gets 1-1 one, one for each land we control and each land card in your graveyard. Very good because sometimes we're sacking them. We might not be able to bring them back. A spell might be countered, but then we might have a massive Multani on there. Seaborn Muse, untapping permanence is good, especially when we've got counter spells and anything like that. Considering putting in Leyline of Anticipation in here to have Flash with this sort of effect so that I can Flash stuff in, uh, let me know what you think about that. Psychosis Crawler, just with the amount of card draw that we have in here, potentially, um, each opponent loses one life whenever we draw a card. So although, you know, we do have a Blue Sun Zenith Brainstorm, but Tachiova really can go off multiple times and we just keep pinging opponents. So yeah, I love that. And Vigor, one of my favourite green creatures, 6-6 six, six with Trample. Uh, damage will be dealt to another creature control. Prevent the damage. Put 1-1 one, one counter for each one damage prevented this way. Love this card. Not played enough. Well, definitely in the groups I play. And I think Vigor is amazing. When he's put into the graveyard, shuffle it into his owner's library as well. And you get a 6-6 six, six for 6 with Trample. Um, this is a value personified and can really, really protect your creatures. One Planeswalker in the deck, um, which is Nissa Vital Force. Untapping lands. Turn him into a 5-5. Five, five. It's still a land. Very nice. Return target permanent card, graveyard to hand, important as well. So we do have, you know, I, d I had Tamiyo in this list before as well, which has a nice recursion as well. But I felt sometimes I didn't have enough bringing back from the graveyard and I was milling away good cards with the plus one with that card. And the emblem, whenever you get a land in its battlefield, I don't control you draw a card because we'd have drawing cards. 
because one of the win cons here, which we're going to get to now, is Thassa's Oracle with Jace, Wilder of Mysteries. Um, lovely full art on that one. I need to still pimp up Jace if I can, if there's a card available. I think there's a Japanese art one I would love. Um, but this is a legitimate win con. Jace is as well. If you would draw a card while no cards in your library, you win the game. And then Thassa can come in if the devotion is X or less and there's more, you know, less cards in the library. We can win the game as well. So with all the card draw that we have, um, these two are a legitimate win con for us. And so are these two massive creatures. Because Udamog can just mill and just we can get this down really early and it can just finish games. Udamog, very hard to deal with unless they have Path to Exile in hand or something like that. And Kozilek, a big 12 12, Annihilator 4, when it's put into Grave from anyway, shuffle it into the library. Um, when you cast it, draw four cards as well, which is really nice. Um, but I have these two Titans. I love these two Eldrazi creatures. And um, with all the mana that we have, we can potentially get these down really early and start swinging and smashing. It will put a target on your head, but hey. Now, another win con that we're talking about win cons now, Field of the Dead. We can search it up with um, various uh, sorcery spells and going to find this land is good because, like I said, multiple lands coming in. Scape Shift, go and find it, put it in there, get loads of 2-2 two -two zombies putting everything in the graveyard potentially when it dies, bringing it back and just getting the same triggers. It, you know, there's multiple ways to deal with this. Even if it's dealt with, we get it back. We do it again, unless there's ways to just totally remove it from the game. But Filled of the Dead, it's an expensive card. Um, but yeah, it is an absolute game winner. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's just me a lot around me going through my cards and telling you, you know, but it has been requested. And I, I wanted to show off this deck first because of... It's my pride and joy. And like I said, I'd love to see yours in the comments, what your pride and joy was. Um, this, for me, I just love playing it. Um, some people, you know, won't see Tachi over as like a, you know, I don't play CEDH. I've got some very strong cards in here. Um, but I just love playing the deck. And sometimes that's what it is. And, and it turns out it can win games and it's pretty strong as well. So like I said at the um, start of the video, make sure you check out yourplaymark.com with my affiliate code. Get yourself some discount. Um, join the Discord because I, you know, if you get some made, I'd love to see your playmats you get made from there or your um, slips there as well. I think it'd be really nice to see your sleeves and then see what designs you come up with. Blue Mage for life. I mean, you saw those count spells in the deck. It goes without saying. I've always been known as the Blue Mage. Uh, but thanks a lot for taking the time to watch the video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you want to see more of these types of videos. Um, subscribe if you're new. You lot take care, and I'll see you on the next one.